Welcome to Calculations, the talk show. I'm Gary Johnson. We've got a special guest here today. And you also will see other hosts, co-hosts. I invited the Thought Brothers here because Bruce George has just got too many things going on. I can't carry the load by myself. I got to get the brothers in to help me. And so, Bruce George, welcome to the show. How you doing, man? Yeah, I'm blessed, Brother Gary Johnson. It's a blessing to be here on your show. In the along with the Thor brothers, I want to thank the good Lord for blessing us to be here. First and foremost, I'm a lover of God and a child of God, so I definitely have to pay homage to my heavenly father. Okay, I want to thank you all for having me, and I want to thank the listeners and watchers live and archive. So I'm excited to be here. Definitely. You know, Bruce, for people who may not know um, your background, okay. you are the co founder of uh, Deaf Poetry Dream. Mm -hmm. And I want you to talk about that and Genius is Common. I'm okay. a part of Genius is Common, uh, you know, and um, <laughs> I want you to be able to talk about it. And then I'm going to throw it over to the fellas because they've done their research and who knows where they're going with you. But I know you're ready to roll. So talk about, oh, absolutely. you know, absolutely. Deaf, okay. deaf Poetry Jam and, and Genius is Common. Me. Um, a little bit about myself. I'm a lover of God. I'm a child of God. My work is my ministry. I'm a social activist. I was born in Harlem, raised in the Bronx. I lived in Brooklyn for over 15 years. I'm a New Yorker to the 15th percentile. And I'm a firm believer that your work is your ministry. I'm right brain and left brain, but I'm classic right brain. And I specialize in psychology, philosophy, classic literature, normally with state programming, metaphysics, body language, the law of attraction. I specialize in power. I'm a wordsmith, word engineer, and a master quotologist. So I was blessed, Brother Gary, to be one of the founders of Russell Simmons' Deaf Poetry Jam on HBO. And we wound up getting a Peabody Award for six seasons in HBO and a Tony Award for the Broadway version. And I was the town executive at HBO and executive consultant to the Broadway show and the rest is they say in history. I have four legacies under my belt. That's one of my legacies, by God's grace. And the second legacy um, is the Genius is Common movement, which is a very, very big deal. The Genius is Common movement um, is the first movement, metaphorically speaking, to put the word genius on trial. We're the first movement to tear down the Berlin Wall of the word genius and put it in the minds of the people where it belongs. So you take a young lady from a housing project that Michael braids hair like Picasso painted, that's a genius. Dave Chappelle is a genius of a comedian. Bishop T.D. Jakes is a genius of a bishop. You, Brother Gary, is a genius of a chef, serial entrepreneur, you name it. You do, do so many different things. So we're the first movement to let the world know that they have been lied to in relationship to the word genius. So when they say you're only a genius if you have 130, 140 IQ in Mensa, that's pure nonsense. That was an arbitrary number made up at Stanford University to make you 1% of the population, which is rooted in elitism. What they don't want you to know, but it's too late now, is that the true origin of the word genius doesn't just apply to insulin. Even Einstein said, we're all geniuses. And if you were to judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree and spend its life believing that it's stupid. The philosopher Buckminster Fuller said that every child is born a genius, but the process of life degeniuses them. Arthur Schopenhauer said that talent is a target that no one else can hit, but genius is a target that no one else can see. So we're the first movement to let the world know that the true origin of the word genius comes from the word genie out of Northern Africa. That ain't sure wrong. And the genie is the guiding tutelary spirit within each of us. So the genius in us is the genie in us and the genie in us is the God in us we've been lied to. Look at the words genie and Genesis. Mm. Genesis is the beginning. God is the alpha and the what? Omega. Look at the word genie in your genes. Your genes is your whole makeup. So the cat is at the bag and the jig is up. We're the first movement to take the elitism out of the word genius. That's where an anti-elitist movement. And I'm looking forward to unpacking more about it. Out of all the things you've been involved in, 
what are you most proud of? Good question. Every last one of them. Everything <laughs> that I've been involved with. One of my four legacies is I'm the founder of the Band and the Republic. The Band and the Republic is a literary anthology by gang members and their feelings. Never been done before. Poetry, prose, short stories, and quotes and interviews from gang members, gang leaders, and those affiliated. Right? Uh, the late Jim Brown wrote the forward to it. He said it's one of the most best well-researched books he's ever read. Malik Yob is in it. The late Ruby D is in it. The late Oscar Brown Jr. is in it. The rap group Dead Prez is in it. You know, you name it, it's doing very well. The Crips, the Bloods, the Latin Kings, Northerners, Southerners, Mexican Mafia, Cruz, Click, Sets. It was smuggled into the security housing unit at Pelican Bay and the Mexican Mafia blessed it. <laughs> so with that said, with all due transparency, I used to be in the herd business. I come out of gang culture, been in several of them. You see, and then, but now God bless me to turn my life around. But what's interesting is that how the status quo will judge people like us. You know, all oh, your gangsters and your thugs. You know what? We didn't have the so-called skin privilege to track from gangs from the, the police department, you know, from gangs into the police department. We didn't have the, the, the complexion for their protection, right, to track from the police department, from gangs into the fire department or into politics with Tammany Hall. Tammany Hall was a gangster, right? And then they all went from gangs, the gangs of New York, they, they tracked from gangs into politics, into the fire department, into the police department. So it's interesting that when people find out about my past, because I'm very transparent about it, oh, I heard you came out of gang culture. You should do stick up. You was very wild and you should run with stick up because you were very wild and brazen. I'm not ashamed of that and I'm not proud of it. You know, and this is how I silence them, and especially people, my brothers and sisters in Christ, those are the ones that will judge me the most. And I silenced them by saying this. Lot was incestuous. Abraham was a liar. Noah was a drunkard. Job doubted God several times. Samson was promiscuous. David was a hope and a murderer. Eliza was suicidal. Peter was embarrassed to let people know that he knew Jesus. Rahab was a prostitute. The disciples were jealous and, 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 and jealous of each other and fell asleep the night that Jesus was taken. No, the Samaritan woman couldn't keep a husband. Moses was a murderer, had anxiety, had a stutter, and he loved him some Egyptian women, by the way, right? Mary Magdalene, demon possessed. Come on now. Saul slaughtered Christians, right? Jeremiah was depressed all the time. And Hezekiah was embarrassed or ashamed of God. So all have fallen short of the glory of God. He said, there's not one of you that is righteous, not one. He said, your righteousness is your filthy rags. We were born in sin and raised in, in iniquity. So you cannot work your way into his kingdom unless we both. It's by our faith in God's grace that we are saved. I wanted to just share that. Go ahead, fellas. Jump in there. Hey, you know, what I would like to do right off the bat is compliment you Thank on you. coming up with that slogan that there's genius in every one of us. And one of the things they called me the researcher, when I was doing my research on you, I came across the school that you created. And it's for, I think, fourth graders through the 10th grade, if, I, okay. if I'm not mistaken. And that type of slogan and motto when you're dealing with kids of that sensitive age is remarkable. And I just want to compliment you on that because a lot of kids don't feel that they have a genius in them. And what you talked about with the definition of the word genius, that was developed years ago, and it was for white people, and Absolutely. it was not for black people. You just want to put it out there. I taught history, mm -hmm. and I know all about how they created that word to make black mm -hmm. folks feel that they were inferior. Mm -hmm. Okay. Absolutely. You know, I appreciate that. So Francis Galton, James Katine Cattell, Charles Murray with the bell curve, they were all eugenists. That's right. right. Part of that racist poppy copy used the old English. They all are part of the same circle, but it never panned out scientifically. Right? So when they talk about them being superior to us, if you're superior to us, then why are you disappearing and we're multiplying? That part. Okay. Not to mention melanin, right? When you got six parts, protons, neutrons, and electrons in terms of melanin. 
which is a polymer, right? Which is the foundation and the base of everything on the planet. It all comes from that polymer, right? That's where you get albinos, albinoism, right? Uh, we as people of, of so-called color, we have over 3,000 shades to us. Then the one drop theory, which talks about how powerful our genes are genetically. See, they know this, right? And they just don't want us to know. So thank you for those kind words. I really appreciate that. Hey, Mr. George, I wanted to yes, say, too. you know, again, uh, genius is common. Um, also, you know, this, this, the, the phrase makes you think. And, um, you know, also give you a shout out from New York. My wife is from the Bronx. And got a that. lot of family uh, in, in NYC. So um, see if I can check okay. out a Yankees game tomorrow for, for the holiday. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, yeah, like you know, and, um, I have members of my family in education and, you know, the motivation of children or young people to know that they have an ability to be special in something that they do. And for us to promote that is, is, is a way to promote positivity in the entire community. Because I think the biggest thing that we, we face today, especially as we get older and we look back at some of the young people and what the things they're doing, um, they're looking for positivity from whoever it may come from to make them feel like they're important or feel like they're special. And unfortunately, in a, a lot of times it comes from the wrong people, the wrong neighborhoods or the wrong areas. So to, to promote something positive like Genius is Common, can you tell us a little bit more about maybe, you know, what's happening in the communities, what effect is, has it had, and, and, and how is it helping maybe, again, people just believe in themselves, whereas before some, some didn't? That's a very good question. Thank you very much for that. My genius is coming movement. I'm a master quotologist. That's one of my geniuses. I'm quoted around the world every nanosecond of every single day. And so the genius is coming movement, it actually got started from one of my quotes. Because I would go around the country and I would ask the youth, when you hear the word genius, what image comes to mind? And they would always say Einstein or a light bulb. And every now and then I would get a Jordan and that troubled me. And I said, you know what? Let me write a quote about that. And the quote is, notwithstanding Einstein, genius is common. And that turned into the slogan, genius is common, which turned into an entire movement. By God's grace, we have a presence in all 50 states, 19 countries with 47 ambassadors in growing. God will do it. We have a presence in Jamaica, Barbados, Ghana, Kenya, Dubai, Norway, Nigeria, the UK, Canada, the Bahamas, St. Lucia, Germany, Denmark, South Africa. We're about to have a presence in the Dominican Republic and Panama. We're talking to the head honcho, I run everything and own everything, trademark, the copyright. We also are a celebrity magnet. We're a YouTube-based movement, TikTok-based movement, Pinterest-based movement, Facebook group movement, and a LinkedIn page movement. We're in our 10th year, by the, by the way. Within my movement, we have a youth entrepreneur division. We have videos from Bo Shell. He's 11 years young. He's the ice cream dude, has his own ice cream truck and business. Kiyashi Ham is 14 years young, has her own publishing company with 12 books under her belt for the latest book on anti-bullying. Chef Toots is 11 years young and she's a master chef who specializes in vegan. Christian, AKA the Chuk Jones is 13 years young and he's a day trader. Little Asma is the best face player in the world at 13 years young. Kennedy Harris is 12 years young, has her own multivitamin company and she's rich. And her brother Caden Harris is 11 years young, has his own financial literacy firm in the bus and he's rich. And both of them are three times children for girlfriends. So the amount of influence that we're having is vast. And by the way, we're in our 10th year. So we have a presence in institutions of lower learning and higher learning. We're in elementary schools, charter schools, high schools, middle schools, colleges, universities, historically black colleges, universities, every black sorority, every black fraternity did geniuses come in videos, the divine nine out of my 47 ambassadors for the Medeltas. And we're a celebrity magnet, by the way, my brother. We have 104 celebrities that endorsed us by doing geniuses come in video jobs. Yes, we even have a geniuses coming video from the United States Senator Barbara Robinson in the 40th District of Baltimore talking about geniuses in prisons and jails. We even have a geniuses coming video from the United States Army in full uniform. And my name is Staff Sergeant so and so, my geniuses so and so, geniuses coming. So we're on the cusp of breaking mainstream any day, hour, a month now, like Black Lives Matter and the Me Too movements, respectively. And we thank God for that. Yes, sir. Thank you, man. Thank great you, feedback. Great stuff. And I'll be checking it out. I appreciate that. Yes, sir. I'll jump in. Um, I'm another lover of New York, too. So shout out to New York. That's where I got my music What's career up? started What's in Brooklyn. 
But um, I'm going to talk about like Deaf Poetry. Deaf Poetry was absolutely one of my favorite shows. I've seen every episode of every season. It actually wow. got me into writing in terms of poetry and, and the songwriting more so now. Don't really do as much poetry, but in terms of bringing that aspect. So I want to credit you for being an inspiration. For Thank Without you. that show, I probably would not be the writer that I am. And wow. um, yeah, I really wanted to. Friend. Yeah, just thanks for that. <laughs> it's great. And um, also, I just had a question about. I, um, what do you think about the climate of kind of um, creativity now, not just music, but in poetry? Because I, I haven't seen many shows or entertainment thing in mainstream that have the spirit of what mm -hmm. that poetry had of, of that, mm -hmm. that real rawness, that authenticity. I mean, HBO helps, but I really haven't seen much. I, I mean, more and more programs like that have faded away in the oblivion. Uh, I was yeah. just wondering your opinion on that. No, no, that's a very good question. Um, you know, when Deaf Poetry Jam was on the air, HBO pushed the poetic license, allowed us to push the poetic license. We really pushed it to the, to the limit. You know, the poet has always been the cajola of history. The poet has always been the truth bearer. The poet has always been the flamethrower. The most dangerous person on the earth is a writer or a poet. That's true. That's why when Napoleon came to power, the first thing he said was kill all the poets. Why did he say kill all the poets? Because the poet has always been the cajoler of history, the flamethrower, the truth bearer, right? And so the mere fact that a writer or a poet or an artist is dangerous, that's why you notice that it's fizzled out because the so-called powers that be want to make sure that the people that don't, they don't have a voice, that they don't have, that, they, that they're not, if they do have a voice, that is not one that is revolutionary that ruffles feathers. So that poetry then was very iconoclastic, very muckraking. And it was one of those shows that it did what it needed to do during this time. Then the so-called powers that be, because there's a movement afoot to definitely quell our power, quell our, our influence, our creativity, because they know for a fact that when you have this up here, Right when you have that brain power, that knowledge power, you know the sky's the limit, and they know they can't control you. So what the system uses, they use this control as a way. They use fear as a way to control the people. Right, the educational system uses fear of you failing your grade. The government uses fear of locking you up. The religious system uses fear of you going to hell. So fear is always and has been used as a way to cajole the people to keep them in line. So. Where we are right now, we are in the age of the Aquarius, actually. And so the so-called powers that be are very, very nervous because people in power are being exposed. People now more than ever are more awake because you have woke culture. And the Republican Party and all of them are fighting against the so-called woke culture because people now more than ever are more awake now more than ever. And due to the communication age that we're in, where people can are uh, uploading and downloading their, their their politic, their knowledge, they're very nervous about that. Uh, but the bottom line is uh, the truth is incontrovertible. Malice may attack it, ignorance may deride it, but in the end, there it is staring you right in your face. Thank you for that question. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for the answer. Like I said, yeah, I've just noticed, like I said, almost like you are alluding to a direct correlation over the years of like trying to get programs like deaf poetry mm -hmm. gone and to get mm -hmm. artists and, and some of the artists were rappers and, you know, artists back in the day that were doing the poems. And now, you know, you don't see artists like that that would be on deaf poetry. Like that, right. you yeah, know, you know, you know sexy red ain't going to show up a deaf poetry and do, you know, exactly. like the artists they're pushing now. You know why? Because the critic historically has always been a gatekeeper to the key. The, the critic has always been a gatekeeper to the state, which is, a, which is a gatekeeper to the ruling class. So when Siskel and Ebert gives you two thumbs up, the reason why they're giving you two thumbs up is because whatever it is that you are creating supports the status quo. They will give you two thumbs down whatever it is that you are creating that goes against the status quo. That goes for rap, that goes for fashion, that goes for books, authors, I don't care what it is. If it goes against status quo, it's going to get two thumbs down and it's going to get blocked. That's why it's very important because of the gatekeepers. It's very important that we have our own social media outlets. We create our own films and we create our own platforms where we can get our voice out of it, out to the masses.
Awesome. You know, Bruce, uh, the thing that you talked about with Napoleon, a lot of people don't realize that's something that lo is looming over us right now. And Absolutely. we may see that again come November because Donald Trump has talked about one of the things that he's going to do is he's going to get rid of CNN, he's going to get rid of MSNBC, and he's going to get rid of any of what he calls the foreign media. And mm -hmm. poets will probably fall in that line because the Supreme Court has just recently just given him autonomous power now to do anything that he chooses to do. So poets who speak out against him, write columns Absolutely. against him, he will have mm -hmm. the power now to yep. just throw you in prison, throw you and get more Absolutely. and you never to be heard from again. Absolutely. I mean, the truth goes through three stages. First, it is ridicule. Then it is violently opposed. And then it is accepted as self-evident. The truth cannot be denied, right? The truth cannot be denied. Dr. King said, truth that's crushed in the ground shall rise. So that's they right. cannot stop the truth from bearing witness, right? It, it's impossible to do that, you know? And that's why they resort to propaganda, right? As a way to cajole you to think differently, you know? Uh, Felipe Luciano said the best. He said the educational system, they don't teach you how to think. They teach you what to think. There's a difference, right? You know, and it's been said, you know, Mark Twain said the best. He said, don't let your schooling interfere with your education. There's a difference between schooling and education. And if you think that the educational system is broken, then you're sadly mistaken. No, it's working exactly the way they designed it to work, which is to make us human capital and to make us sheep as That's William true. Cooper coined the word sheep. It's always been that way. Hey, Bruce, out of all the things you've been involved in, what are you most proud of? Good question. Every last one of them. Everything okay. that I've been involved with. One of my four legacies is I'm the founder of the Bandana Republic. The Bandana Republic is a literary anthology by gang members and affiliates. Never been done before. Poetry, prose, short stories, and quotes and interviews from gang members, gang leaders, and those affiliated, right? Uh, the late Jim Brown wrote the forward to it. He said it's one of the most best well-researched books he's ever read. Malik Yob is in it. The late Ruby D is in it. The late Oscar Brown Jr. is in it. The rap group Dead Prez is in it. You know, you name it, it's doing very well. The Crips, the Bloods, the Latin Kings, Northerners, Southerners, Mexican Mafia, Cruz, Click, Sets. It was smuggled into the security housing unit at Pelican Bay and the Mexican Mafia blessed mm -hmm. So with that said, with all due transparency, I used to be in the herd business. I come out of gang culture, been in several of them, you see. And then, but now God bless me to turn my life around. But what's interesting is that how the status quo will judge people like us. You know, all your gangsters and your thugs. You know what? We didn't have the so-called skin privilege to track from gangs from the, the police department you know, from gangs into the police department. We didn't have the, the, the complexion for their protection, right, to track from the police department, from gangs into the fire department, or into politics with Tammany Hall. Tammany Hall was a gangster, right? And then they all went from gangs, the gangs of New York, they, they tracked from gangs into politics, into the fire department, into the police department. So it's interesting that when people find out about my past, because I'm very transparent about it, oh, I heard you came out of gang culture. You should do stick up. You was very wild and you used to run with stick up because you were very wild and brazen. I'm not ashamed of that and I'm not proud of it. You know, and this is how I silence them, and especially people, my brothers and sisters in Christ, those are the ones that would judge me the most. And I silence them by saying this Lot was incestuous, Abraham was a liar. Noah was a drunkard. Job doubted God several times. Samson was promiscuous. David was a hope and a murderer. Eliza was suicidal. Peter was embarrassed to let people know that he knew Jesus. Rahab was a prostitute. The disciples were jealous and, 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 and jealous of each other and fell asleep the night that Jesus was taken. No, the Samaritan woman couldn't keep a husband. Moses was a murderer, had anxiety, had a stutter, and he loved him some Egyptian women, by the way. Right? Mary Magdalene demon possessed. Come on now. Saul slaughtered Christians, right? Jeremiah was depressed all the time. And Hezekiah was embarrassed or ashamed 
of God. So all have fallen short of the glory of God. He said, there's not one of you that is righteous, not one. He said, your righteousness is your filthy rags. We were born in sin and raised in, in iniquity. So you cannot work your way into his kingdom unless we grow. It's by our faith in God's grace that we are saved. I wanted to just share that. So for any highfalutin brothers and sisters out there <laughs> that are judgmental, that are judgmental. I hear you. Come on, fellas. Come on, thought brothers, as we get ready to, you know. Hey, Mr. George, let me, I, I, let me round it up. But look, you, you coming from that that DEF COM, uh, you know, family. Um, were there any interactions between the uh, poetry um, division and the music, the comedy? Um, any interactions on, on on projects that you guys did together? Or was it all yeah. more like separate divisions? Yeah, Broadway. Um, because we won a Tony Award, we won a Peabody Award for six seasons in HBO, and a Tony Award for Broadway. So they had a DJ, his name is eluding me right now, that mixed the music to the spoken word that they were doing. So there was a marriage. And then there's also a marriage between rap and poetry, right? And so there's the it's called spoken rap. So there was definitely a marriage. That's a great question, by the way. There definitely was a marriage. Thank you, Mr. George. Appreciate that. Thank you. Appreciate yeah, you. One of, right. A couple of my favorite performances were rappers just doing their songs a cappella. I remember you know, Kanye West Absolutely. did uh, Gold Digger before Gold Digger dropped as a song. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Kanye West, all of them, Dave Chappelle, they were all in the show. Yeah, and Chappelle's was really his, good, yeah. Yeah, this was good, yeah. He's, he was on there several times, and it was a very surreal experience for me and all of the other producers and the poets that were on the show, you know. And when I was a town executive at HBO, it was, I loved it. You know, you had to convince me in one minute, you know, myself and Walter Moody, who was the assistant town executive at HBO. And we just had fun. And back in the day, it was tapes, these gigantic tapes. So we're dating ourselves. It was over a quarter of a century. And so it was a real fun project. It helped push the poetic license and also helped make sex in poetry sexy again. And it extended the shelf life of poetry. You know, it extended the shelf life. Of it. Absolutely. I'm just glad to see deaf comedy has uh, stood the test of time. So yes, many like things back in the day have fizzled away and just disappeared. Mm -hmm. I remember mm -hmm. Martin Lawrence and all those guys cut their teeth on deaf comedy jam. That's where mm -hmm. you had to go before you stepped up. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I'm, I'm glad to see it stood the test of time. You know, when you look at, I, I like that is what you just said, because when you look at literature, a definition of literature one definition is writing of enduring interest. Writing of enduring interest, right? And then outside of the Brooklyn Library, it says the spoken word perishes, but the written word endures. Right. So there's something about the written word that that really sticks with you, that sticks in your crawl, that that really you know that, that really sticks with you. God says in the Bible, death and life lies within the power of the tongue. And those that love it, we eat the fruit thereof. John 1.1, 1, 1, right? In the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was with God. The word was, was with God, and the word was God, right? You know, John being an apostle who definitely uh, paid, paid homage to the coming of Christ and, you know, and, 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 and bearing witness to his miracles. So John was the apostle that, you know, was letting them know just how much of a miracle maker uh, Christ was at the time. So... You know, John 1 1 uh, was about that. That was about that part right there. So, yeah, God is great. God is great. You know, absolutely. You know, Bruce, I always come away after a conversation or meeting with you being and feeling smarter. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> Praise God for that. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, I always come <laughs> like, whoa, you know, uh, submarine deep, you know. <laughs> And, uh, God. God. you know, if somebody watching wants to be a part of your movement, tell mm -hmm. them how they can be a part of the movement and where can they go? Because we're going to put all your links up there anyway. No, I really, I really appreciate it. Um, they can go through you, Gary, if they want. They can go yeah. and reach out to you, Gary. Let them know how to get in contact with you. So when they get in contact with you, then you can refer them to me. Got it. And then we, we could take it from there. Or okay. they can just go to the, we have two websites. We have geniusescommon.com, which is the main website. And then we have our business directory that debuted on the 7th of last month, 
I mean, that's Geniuses Common Business Directory.com. And so, and, and I'm Google, they can just reach, put my name in Google. I'm Google verified, I'm LinkedIn verified, you know, the whole nine. And they can reach out to me that way to be a part of the movement. So thank you very much for sharing that. This, this platform is amazing. You know, this, oh, I, 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 this really has good. been good. People like you um, have motivated me and all I do is just pay it forward to other people, you know, because that's what Love I should it. be doing. Love it. Fellas, okay. any final questions for uh, Bruce George before we, you know, get tucked in our jammies, you know? <laughs> the only thing I'll say is whoever goes to GeniusCommons.com, they'll find the website is extremely interesting. And they will spend that. a lot of time on it. Uh, the that. part about your academy, I found extremely interesting because I looked at the, the different things and levels that you are going to prepare these kids for the future with college yeah, and you. business and everything else. Uh, it's, it's quite that. remarkable. Yeah, I appreciate that. I mean, our business directory, we're giving out free gold listings to all academies, charter schools, high schools, and non-Black black nonprofits. They're all getting free gold listings. And each gold listing retails for $499.80. And by the way, everybody on the panel, I'm gifting you with a free gold listing. So Gary, Give them all free gold listings, courtesy of myself and the Genius is Coming Movement. All right. Okay. Yeah. Carlos, I feel something coming on, Carlos. Come yeah, on. I know, I know what's coming. <laughs> I know what's coming. Buckle Come up. On, Carlos. <laughs> all right. You know what I got to ask? Yeah. <laughs> Brooklyn Nets or New York Knicks? Uh, I'm not a sports person, so you're asking the wrong person. I'm a, I'm right. a nerd. But um, I would say the Knicks. <laughs> all right. You just made my wife, mother-in-law, and, and father-in-law, and, and, and that my that side of the family very happy. With <laughs> very happy, All right. right? Carlos, All right. you really, <laughs> Carlos, yeah. you really surprised me because this was a perfect opportunity for you to get your 501 C3 into I was this. Tell, they, want me to, they want me to say, but look, Mr. George, <laughs> down here mm -hmm. in Prince George's County, Maryland, outside of Washington, D.C., <laughs> Okay. 501 C3 called the Fairmont Heights Football Alumni right. uh, right. Association. The purpose right. of the Fairmont Heights football, not a regular alumni association, but football is to help student athletes basically be successful on and off the field um, as they continue on their journey to try to achieve mm -hmm. excellence again in the classroom and then on the field to try to propel them in life. So sounds good. You're getting a free actually, ball mystery automatically. We got you covered. We got you covered. Yes, sir. I, I yes, sir. teed you up, Carlos. I teed you up. I appreciate up. that. They wanted me to put it out there. You know, I, I was I'm trying to keep it just focused on on our guests, but okay. you know, I had to put it out there. So um no, we'll talk more that. about that. But yes, yeah, from a historic black high school here in Prince George's County, Maryland. So we're gonna keep doing great things and we're gonna learn That's from uh, people like yourself and check out this genius is common website. Appreciate Thank that. you. Appreciate yes, sir. That. I bless you. Definitely. CJ, <laughs> CJ, final word before we close out with Bruce George. Uh, I'll just say um, thanks for being a part of the the movement that made poetry cool again. Because if you look in yep. DC right now, as uh, I'm a um, I'm a musician, but there's a very very strong budding poetry scene of people wow. doing you know open mics and there's there's a strong scene nice. of, of of a lot of people who are really really into the scene. And I don't think there would have been that movement without a show like Deaf Poetry or without people like you True. you know supporting the that. youth in the way that you do. So we just want to uh, thank you for that. that. Now, praise God for that. I really appreciate you. All right. This was Ladies fun, and Gary. gentlemen, Bruce this George. Fun, Gary. Hey, I told you we're going to have fun, man. <laughs> we will be in touch. Ladies and gentlemen, you can see all this on uh, calculationstalkshow.com, thethoughtbrothers.com, blackmenandamerica.com, and all the other platforms that I own that are black owned. How's that for a shameless That's right. <laughs> That's what it's all about. That's right. That's right. All right, everybody. We will see you next time. And for Gary Johnson and the Thought Brothers, we are out of here. Hang on for a second, Bruce. All okay. right. Good night. Cool. Take care, everyone. Good night. Hi, I'm Gary Johnson of Gary Johnson Media, and my genius is common, and yours is too. Take a look and learn how you can be a part of this growing and important movement. This is Gary Johnson, and this is my genius. 
my genius is that I'm an author. I am an online magazine publisher. My genius is that I am a master chef and a premium organic spice maker. I'm a father, I'm a husband, I'm a friend. My genius is common and can't be quantified. I just can't let you go